Hey, this is Eric Davis from Little Stream Software. Um, this is part of my tech learning series. Uh, this week I'm actually playing with Redis a little bit. So Redis is a key value data store, um, kind of like Memcache and kind of like uh, a lot of the other NoSQL databases, but I know a lot of people use it because it's pretty quick, it's you know very lightweight, and it's really easy to understand. So basically this week I want to work on the running application that I've been working on again. Um, for those who don't know, it's basically a simple kind of CRUD app that lets you store details about runs. So how far you ran, what date you ran, the pace, duration, that sort of idea. Um, very basic, very CRUDish, but at the same time you can kind of look at you know some concepts and it's not a to-do app like everyone else does. So what I decided to do is I want to write the app as a web app using Sinatra, just because Sinatra is really easy and it kind of lets me see a lot of the guts of what I'm doing. And then I also decided to use the Redis gem just because it's a very simple gem and it's actually just like a Ruby layer over the Redis API. So you're pretty much calling Ruby methods that correspond one to one with the Redis API. So let's get started here. Um, let me show you my gem file. So like I said, Sinatra, um, shotgun for the web server, and then Redis. And I'm also using doing a full TDD with this just because it's Ruby. I know how to do TDD in Ruby. And um, as you'll see, I have had to do a lot of stuff with the actual data storage. So TDD in a data storage is probably, probably a good idea because you get a lot faster feedback versus like a UI. So for TDD, I use mini test and rack test. I also part of it, I use auto test just to kind of have it running in the background. So let me go and Actually, I'll show you the application. So this is the test for the application, mostly setup stuff right here. And I wrote this kind of as an integration test, so it's basically you know, what a user is going to be doing. Um, there's some setup stuff for actually for Sinatra and Rack test up here. Um, and then the only other setup is right here. I want to basically select uh, the Redis database number two because Redis uses integers for its databases, and I already used the first database for um, another app, and then the second database, you know, database one, because it's zero based. The second database I'm using for kind of the production version of this app. So when I'm testing, I want to select the second one. And then right here, I'm calling DB is kind of a pointer to the, the Redis connection. I'm calling flush db to kind of clean out the database and then I'm calling keys which would tell Redis to give me all of the keys that's in the database um, making sure that's a, an empty array here so this is all this is doing is just basically cleaning it out it's a very simple way you could probably use some other methods but this was quick and dirty so a sanity test make sure everything's hooked up but okay and then so what I did is I just started writing different test methods for kind of each of the features, each of the integrations, I think. So there's getting the root, you know, making sure the response is good, uh, listing the runs on the root. So the root's like the index page. Um, the, there should be a form to add a new run on the index page, um, posting a new run, you know, all that. So this is, you know, standard CRUD type stuff. And you can see these aren't done because I actually didn't get to them. But I did do the first part. So listing runs. So in order to list a run, I figured I'm going to need to have some runs in the database. So started kind of mocking out like how do I want the, you know, kind of the, the internal API to work. So, you know, run, it will be my class and I'll just basically mimic Rails and mimic active record here and run new and then run save. And so right away I found that that's going to, that's always not going to work because there's no run class. And so started implementing a run class and it. So it basically ended up that you have Sinatra on top, you know, doing the web, and then the run class right here, which is kind of the, the data layer, and then Redis in between at the bottom. So the nice thing about this kind of layout is I can change the Sinatra class right here if I want to change the UI. Um, if I want to change, like, how I'm connecting to Redis, which I use just basically JSON and storing strings, and then later found out that, oh, I could have used actually hash, mes hash methods in Redis itself. Um, if I want to change that, I can just change that in this run section and I won't have to mess with the Sinatra part. So it's just basically layering the app, uh, standard programming type stuff. So 
this is the application test and then I also did some testing of the actual run class itself. Uh, once again, you know, same setup block as I had in the other stuff. Basically, there's a couple methods I had to do. I had to make sure that a run has attributes. So date, distance, duration, pace, and comment. Um, this little uh, iterator right here is basically just making sure that it has a getter and a setter. And then making sure I can actually set it on initialize. So, you know, passing in a hash on new. And then the interesting thing is because Redis doesn't really have primary keys like you would think in SQL. Um, you know, especially if you do Rails, you have the ID auto incrementing. So I had to think of a way to kind of make my own way to like, this is a primary key for the run. Because you can't use the date of a run because you can run multiple times in a day. And you can't use like a combination of the date and distance because if you're, say you're training on the track, you might run a mile on the track a couple times a day. And so you, you, can't, you can't use that because it's not unique enough. Um, you could probably mix like date, duration, distance, pace, and you know maybe if you actually clock the actual time, like you know at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. in the morning or whatever, that could give you something unique. But that just that's kind of hard because now you're putting all of that in the primary key, and if you go and actually change any of that, your primary key changes. So what I ended up just doing is using a, a UUID for it, and uh, I'll show you the code in a second. But Ruby 1.9.3 actually comes with uh, a UUID generator that's pretty simple. So, um, you know, basically this test is just making sure there's a UUID and then I have a, you know, pretty ad hoc test just to my own knowledge to make sure the UUID is getting pretty unique. And it's basically brute force making a hundred of them, pulling them out, running unique on it, and then checking the length. You know, if there's duplicates, unique's gonna, you know, get rid of the duplicates and you'd end up like with 90 or 99 records and so this is basically making sure there's a hundred unique records when I generate a hundred. So like I said very very general and I actually just use this just to see that it worked. So let me pop over to the actual code again. So I just embedded the run class in the Sinatra file. Um, you can see so runs up here up top and then oops, the bottom here here's the actual Sinatra. So, like I said, here's some attributes, um, initialize, that basically just, um, if you're passing in a hash, it'll basically just set the attributes for you. Here's the generator for the ID. So, using secure random, which if you look up here, all you have to do is require it. It's part of the Ruby standard library in 193. Um, just require it, and then just call UUID on it. So it's pretty simple. Um, and I'm doing it this way with the double pipe equals just to make sure if a record already has an ID, like say it's an existing record, it won't generate a new one. So that's kind of just a, a quick way to kind of make sure that I'm not overriding changes and just duplicating the records. And so the big guts that I had was basically the save and find method. So I'm basically, once again, mimicking Active Records API here. The way it works is, let me actually show you this. So $db uh, redis new connects to redis database uh, select one selects the first database which is actually the second because it's zero based and like I said that's my production database and so right here this is basically just calling redis set and the way set works is you pass in the key in this case my UUID and then the second parameter is basically what value you want to set it to and in this case I'm have a Ruby hash arrow of the attributes and I'm calling to JSON. Um, yeah, that's it. Basically the JSON string I figured it's going to be the easiest way to set it and then get it back out later. And then um, the response from set would be either the string OK or an error or I think it might return nil. So I'm just basically if the response is OK return that. So basically save is going to return a true or false. And on the other side find uh, Redis has the get method, which basically you give it the key you're looking for, which would be the UUID, and that's going to get you the record. And it's either going to get you the record, or it's going to get you nil. And so I just basically check if it's the record, I'm going to do stuff with it. If it's not, return nil, meaning I couldn't find the record. And since the record comes out, it's going to be a JSON string. I parse the JSON, 
and then basically pass that to the new block or the the new method and if we look up here oops, what that's going to do is initialize is going to take the hash of all the attributes which is going to set it and so the end result is this find is going to return a fully set up run um, object so that's basically the data storage part um, I didn't have time to actually do any of the UI work like you can see here in the Sinatra it just says hi um, but basically at this point all you would really need to do is kind of go um, be able to get all of the runs so you know basically for the list like you know find all or whatever if you're using active record um, and then the updating actually should be handled um, by save here because save is just doing a set and the set operation will either create a new um, object in Redis or it will actually just override what's already there so updating is pretty much done already um, I'd have to do something for delete but once again that's just another uh, another Redis call and I would wrap it in a method here in this class so that's pretty much all you need to do some cred stuff on Redis now like I said there's a there's a better way instead of actually taking this Ruby hash and calling to, to JSON um, Redis has hash operations which will let you use native Redis objects and the nice thing about that is you don't have to pull stuff out convert it out of JSON into Ruby and then do an operation you can actually use some other Redis operations to work on the hashes so you can tell Redis hey give me all the keys of this object or you can tell Redis I think you can tell like I want to iterate over all the hashes and you know extract out some stuff so that's probably what I would do yeah, if I actually redid this I just I didn't realize it was there and forgot that you know oh yeah Redis has hashes and arrays and stuff like that built in so that's pretty much it for the Redis app um, you know I mean the there's tests like normal um, there some of them are failing and they're failing right now because I wrote the tests that actually go all the way through the UI and so those don't work but you can see here there's you know a bunch of tests and a bunch of assertions already and let me see it should be able to just run actually and it should just run just the data model tests and so the data model is pretty much all here and you can see you know this is full stack like this is going from the Ruby to the Redis database and back out so it's you know it's pretty quick and you can run it multiple times and it should you know that clearing and I think it's the flush commands that's making sure that each time the run each time you run it the stuff's getting cleared out yeah flush DB so that's Redis I'm pretty impressed with it I actually have it running in production on Chirk um, basically doing some very low-key operations just to see how it performs in production um, but basically between that and then playing with this right now I'm actually considering rolling out Redis a bit more um, you know kind of using it for not actually the core saving of stuff but actually like kind of uh, you know saving metrics or saving tests or like event logs and stuff like that so it's it's a pretty neat little engine if you haven't played with it give it a try um, you know like I said the Redis gem is really all you need I mean if you just fire up IRB within the Redis gem you can pretty much explore a lot just with that gem alone so and then if you wanted to do more stuff there's a couple other gems that add more layers um, there might be one that kind of is a Redis active record layer and then I know there's a few that let you kind of merge active record with like a SQL database with Redis so like some attributes go to SQL some attributes go to Redis so there's a lot of good stuff there um, feel free to explore it and this has been a short, short screencast of my experience with Redis take care